and welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous with Shorty Vaughn. Today we're going to be making green chili pork. We're going to start out with a salsa verde. We're going to add our pork to it. We're going to put it in the crock pot. We're going to let it go all day long. The first part is fairly involved. The second part is set it and forget it because that's what we like best. And we're actually going to have dinner tonight with this. And we're going to have a freezer meal because I don't know how to make less green chili pork. I know how to make a lot, but I don't know how to make a little. So it's a great freezer meal. And so we'll save that in the freezer for another day when we need something quick and easy and fast. And we can just throw that in the microwave or the easy bake oven. Or, you know, if we make another pot pie out of it, throw it into the regular oven. My easy bake oven does not bake especially well. It cooks great, but as far as a baked item, it sometimes leaves something to be desired. So. We'll use the regular oven. We're gonna get started on our salsa verde. And the first step is doing our tomatillos. So let's go ahead and get those done. Okay, so I'm just gonna peel back the husk. Chop off the top a little bit. And then I'm just gonna cut them right in half. No big deal. And then I have my oven preheated to 525 degrees and I am going to put these on a pre-lined baking tray. It has some aluminum foil on it and then I'm going to spray them with a little bit of olive oil and then I'm going to put them in the oven and I'm going to turn the broiler on. I want it to be hot in the oven and I also want to turn the broiler on because I want these to get a little bit blackened on the outside. And I'm only quartering these, or having them, pardon me, I'm only having these because I'm going to put them in the food processor with some green chilies and other various peppers that I have in my stock and then I have out in the garden. So we've got a couple of things we're gonna do there. We're going to get these roasted off. Then we're going to whip out the food processor. And this is going to be the hardest part of the whole day. It's making this green salsa verde for our pork. Because the rest of it is going to sit in the crock pot until really close to dinner time. So the final dish of this is going to be... A green chili pork pot pie because Andrew has been begging me for a pot pie and I have not really been wanting to make a pot pie so I am going to do two in one because I really want green chili he loves it and then we're going to put a cornbread topping on it for our pot pie crust and then just cook those off at the very last minute in the oven for the cornbread to set. Should be delicious. Not worried at all. So I'm just removing the husks. Cutting off the top. Having. Got one more to do. And then I'm gonna get these all rinsed off. I'll be back right in a second. Okay, so my tomatillos have all been washed. They're not sticky anymore. And let's go ahead and get you down here some. And I have the jalapenos that we bought at Fry's, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. They had a yellow sticker. They were significantly significantly marked down. I think they were a buck 84 or something like that. Anyhow, we have some of them from there. One, two, three, about three and a half of those they've been sitting in my freezer just waiting to get used up every time i open the freezer door me me choose me i'm spicy and delicious and they will be and here we go we've got our tomatillos all laid out i have my oven preheated to 525 degrees which sounds like a lot. Maybe it is. These are our bell peppers that we got at Food City. Two for a dollar, was it? Something like that. Two for 
three for a dollar. I can't remember. They were very affordable. This is actually a very affordable dish, and there are a lot of servings that come off of this. So, yep, it makes it the perfect have it today, save it for later kind of a meal. Anyhow, our oven is preheated to 525 degrees because we really want to kind of char these a little bit. We're going to make a little bit of a salsa and then we are going to simmer our pork in that all day. And so a high heat and then as soon as I put these in, I'm going to turn the broiler on to make sure that they get a little bit suntanned. And then we're going to throw them in the food processor. So, I, I think that's it. I think we're ready to go. All right, let's, let's get these puppies in here. Oh boy, that's toasty. That is definitely toasty. So now I'm going to switch it to broil. And for my oven, I have to vent it ever so slightly so that the broiling burner on the top does not switch off. And I am going to guess that this is going to take... Oh, probably about 10 minutes. So I'll keep a close eye on it. Don't want to burn the house down, but I have my fire extinguisher right at the very front of this under the sink in case I do. Safety first. Okay, well while those broil in the oven and get a good tan, I am just going to chop up a couple of onions. And again, I'm not worried about how those are chopped because they are going to get food processed. We're not going to grind them to get death, hopefully, but we are just going to give them a good zip up here. This is a Roboku. Um, it's a great food processor. It's a little bit pricey. It was a gift from Andrew a couple of years ago, and I am lucky to have one. They are very powerful, and like I said, hopefully we won't process these to death. I'll probably just use the pulse function, but I am going to put in one yellow sweet onion, one red onion, and then I'm also going to put in green onion. I'll put in the tomatillos and the jalapenos and the, and the multicolored bell pepper. This dish tastes amazing but it doesn't always have the most appealing color in my opinion um just like split pea soup in fact it's it's kind of that color so all of the elements are really colorful and delicious and it will taste great as a finished product I need to turn this Oh, we're just going to get a little, yeah, we're getting some color on it now. Okay. So what's the thing? Yeah, the, the end result is not is not the most appealing color, but it tastes amazing, especially when you've cooked it all day long. Uh, in the slow cooker. When I was at Smart and Final yesterday, I was buying some tor uh, tortillas and the gentleman who was getting them down from an upper shelf for me gave me his recipe for green chili pork and he was so cute and funny. Everyone there is super helpful, so that's nice. Okay, let's get this green or this red onion all chopped up here. Okay, so we're just waiting on the veg to come out of the broiler, and we'll be right back. Okay, while those broil, I'm going to go ahead and get out my meat. And this is the pork taco ancho meat that I purchased at Albertsons last week as a 30% off. And it's been in my freezer for a couple of days. 
taking it out to thaw. Because when you're buying something off the manager specials, it's probably pretty close to the sell-by date. So if I don't plan on making it in the next two days after the, the date of my purchase of a manager special, then I do go ahead and just put that into the freezer and it can be thawed and used in a couple of days after that. But this looks, smells, and feels fantastic. So it's all ready to go. I've got a pot out here on my stove and I'm just going to give these a little saute before we put them in the crock pot. Let me get this into the sink and wash my hands up, check on my stuff. It's good, 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 good. Getting a good tan. All washed and rinsed here. Clean hands, yay, hooray. And let's make ourselves a little bit of leg room. Still doing well, okay. This pan should be okay. We'll go ahead and toss these in. Not that part. That'll do it. Okay, we're just going to brown these up a little bit. This was up slightly over a pound of meat. So, plenty in there for two meals and a freezer meal too. And then I will serve this maybe next time over some rice. Well, we might put some rice into our pot pie. I'm gonna have to think about that. Come on, come on. You can do it, I believe in you. The great thing about YouTube is that my husband used to come in here Let's see, Tanya, who are you talking to? And I would say, Andrew, I'm talking to the food. And he would think that I was losing my mind. But I, you know, they need some encouragement to be their best selves, to be delicious, and nutritious. And so, yeah, now when he comes in, he's like, oh, oh, she's filming. I mean, he can think whatever he wants to. I still just talk to the food sometimes. Okay, not quite there. Not, not quite. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'd like to shut this door a little bit. Maybe I will for just a few minutes because, like I said, my broiler needs the door open. Otherwise, that top, the top element uh, gets too hot and will turn off. It's an unfortunate feature of this stove. But I love this stove because I can can on it. Um, I had an induction stove when we first bought this house and I could not cook on it. I burned everything that I put on here. Um, I could not figure out the induction. And then when I was reading the instructions to the oven that I couldn't can on the glass because it wasn't, it could not withstand the weight of the huge pot, the water, the jars that you might stack or double stack that the glass could not withstand. This oven is the pits. And I called my mother and I was crying and I said, Mom, I can't cook on the stove. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're eating like really burnt bad food for every day. And she said, I'll buy you a new stove. Get a coil one. And that's all I've ever cooked on besides gas. And so I went and I got this and my mother paid for it. And I was very grateful. And now that she has passed, I like this stove even more because every time I come in here and cook something, which is at least once a day, I think about my mom and how she bought me the stove and she saves the day and I don't know. Anyhow, I have all kinds of replacement parts that I've purchased for this 
because I want to use it for, you know, hopefully the rest of my life. And in the event that they stop making parts for it, I want a surplus so that I can, you know, get it fixed. But that's the story of my stove. My mommy bought it for me. Okay, well that helps hurry things along. But I'm thinking it could still even go for a few minutes. Let me, let me see if I can get another hot one here. I'd love to show you. See how those have a little bit of char on them? I want just a tad bit more, just a little bit. Those are those are really going to add a lot of flavor, and and uh, blistering these is a pretty good practice, in my opinion. Cornbread topping. Okay, so I'm going to say that this is enough char on my tomatillos and peppers. It looks pretty good. It smells amazing, and they're just a little bit darker than they were before so that's fine not burnt just blistered just like if you were trying to let those slightly cool I've turned off the heat for my pork now I'm gonna go get the crock pot we're almost there we're almost to the easy part we've got just a couple more steps and we're to the easy part Yay, hooray. Okay, so now we're just adding the onions and peppers. And, pardon me, the, the onions in here, but I'm adding the peppers and the tomatillos to my food processor. If I had thought about that, I would have smoked these out on the grill when I had it on, but I had that puppy pretty loaded up. So I'm not sure that we had a lot of extra room for it. It says cold winter food. And in the summertime if I want it and I don't have it in a freezer meal, well then we'll just go somewhere. Just go somewhere and get it. Yeah, that's still really hot. So when you're blending or you are going to put something in the food processor and you have hot items, take a towel and fold it up. And then I'm just going to press pulse. And that way, if I have any hot, it doesn't splatter all over my kitchen up to the ceiling. Because Lord knows I would never get it off if it was up there. And I'm just going to give this a few pulses. And I don't know, that was like 10 tomatillos and some jalapenos. What was that? Three and a half. And then some of the bell pepper and, you know, pretty much whatever delicious peppers that you like. I thought I had some in the garden, but apparently I had already picked them and the ones that were out there were so small. So we're going to let them just keep on growing and they'll be there for us next time. On my tray, I have a lot of tomatillo juice, so I'm going to go ahead and pour that off into my crock pot and we're just gonna move the roboku now well, first we're gonna unplug it lord's mercy i almost gave myself whiplash on that one and then i'm gonna go ahead and just park it over here in its little house on the appliance graveyard it's not something that i use every day but boy it comes in really handy sometimes. So, yay, hooray for that. We've got our crock pot. Let's go ahead and get that plugged in. And let's grab, a, you know what, let's grab the spatula. The spatula, I think, is going to be our, it's still pretty hot, so let's use this. And I just want every drop because this is so yummy and delicious. Let 
we bought it. We gotta use it. Now let's say you didn't want to go to all this trouble to make a salsa verde. Buy one at the store. Buy your favorite. Or I think this would make an amazing sauce for your green chili pork. This guacamole salsa from Herdez. I love this and we use this on a lot of things. The only thing that I can tell you about this is that you have to use it and use it rapidly because I have actually had this one mold before. So I usually two or three weeks is about all I can store this for but this is really good. If you did not want to go to the trouble of making your own salsa verde then by all means grab yourself some from the grocery store, grab some kind of a pork product, put it into your crock pot and just let that puppy go all day long. Okay. These blades are extremely sharp and I found out that I could get them sharpened at my farmer's market and I think it only cost five dollars for me to have them sharpened so I thought that was well worth it. My farmer's market is not like farmer's markets in other parts of the country. I was in Tennessee visiting my uncle and cousins and you want to go to farmer's market? Well heck yeah I want to go to farmer's market. They took me to this farmer's market and they had the most huge beautiful big produce and I said this is not like my farmer's market well, what do you have well, we've got one or two people selling produce and then we have a lot of vendors that are doing everything from making keys to selling you know signs and tchotchkes and what have you and you know decorative items for your garden and wind chimes and wind spinners and I said oh and I well, you know, maybe that's just Arizona. So, and then we're going to put our pork in. Easy, easy peasy. Look at my, let's take a look at my green chili. So there we go. We've got all of our peppers, our onions, our what have you. Terrific. Fabulous. Do what you do. It's going to need some seasoning. So I'm going to cheat a little bit on my spices because not everywhere in the country or the world are you going to be able to find something culantro. Probably we could find that at Food City, but we don't have it today and I'm not going to worry about it. But I do have taco seasoning and this has chili pepper, cumin, oregano, sea salt, onion, garlic, smoked paprika, red and green bell pepper, a little cocoa powder and jalapeno salt and pepper sounds good to me so we are going to put some of this in here as our seasoning and i don't know we're going to put about maybe a tablespoon and a half we've got some dried parsley we're going to put some of that in about a tablespoon and then we're going to put in some cilantro from last year's garden and I've been picking a lot on my parsley and my cilantro and it only has a couple of more weeks to replenish itself so that I can dry it for next year so we're gonna let that just have a little bit of a break now because I got it out because it smells so good add some. I'm going to add like a quarter of a cup to it. Nobody will know the difference. It will be delicious. But I have to watch out about how much liquid I put in here because when I'm cooking in a crock pot, I just know that whatever liquid I put in at the beginning is pretty much the same amount of liquid that I am going to have at the end. And because there's no evaporation, the lid is on, this is, you know, heated from the bottom up. The lid is on. It's tight. You can sit there and watch the condensation fall back into the bowl. 
So I don't want it to be too watery. I do want it to be a little bit thicker and somewhat substantial. So whatever water I put in, whatever liquid I put into this, I know that I am going to have to live with, so to speak. Or I'm going to have to make like a cornstarch slurry to thicken that up. But this is pretty, pretty darn thick. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of chicken stock to it. And yes, I know that the vegetables will give off a little bit of liquid, but boy, that's thick even for me. So that's more like that's more like a gruel consistency than even a stew consistency maybe so I've got some of my homemade chicken stock and I'm gonna put this in here if I was doing this vegetarian with the uh, potatoes carrots onion celery use the veg stock though I mean that would be fine I have a few friends who are vegetarians and uh, I like to accommodate them as best as I can. I think that's uh, it's an easier lifestyle now than it was when I was a very young girl. I, my mother moved into a neighborhood and they had always lived in the country. So they moved into a suburb and there was a fence between them and the neighbor. And... My mother was cooking hot dogs for lunch for the kids and the kids across the street wanted to know what a hot dog was that they had never had one and my mother being the way that she was oh, here here have a hot dog and their parents were so upset and came over and this was the early 1960s and came over and raised nine kinds of hades with my mother because she gave her their kids hot dogs and that they were vegetarians and my mother didn't know what a vegetarian was and she couldn't believe that these people didn't do they do not eat meat and she would tell the story do you know vegetarians don't eat meat do you know that that's a thing who would have ever thunk it anyhow she was funny and a little bit country and and i like that story i think that's hysterical anyhow they never did develop a good relationship with those neighbors and uh, I think they were pretty happy when my mom and dad moved back out to the country. We lived way far out in the desert. At the time, it was very remote. Now, it is very um, populated. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get the lid on this puppy and get it cooking. Because, you know, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Okay, so I did find my lid. I'm going to pop that on. I'm going to turn it to high for the first two hours just to make sure everything gets heated through. I'm going to go ahead and slide that to the back of my countertop here so I still have plenty of space to continue my work for today. I'm going to let this go for about the first two hours on high. Then I'm going to turn it down to low and then I'm going to cook it for about six more hours on low and then i am going to dish it off into two smaller vessels and then i'm going to whip up some jiffy's cornbread uh cornbread mix and put that on top and then put that in the oven just to bake the cornbread so for about 20 minutes in the corn in the oven so that was our hard part was making the salsa verde like i said if you don't feel like it cheat Buy yourself some salsa verde at, a, at the grocery store or get this guacamole salsa or just throw everything in there and let it do what it does. Honestly, we probably could have chopped those tomatillos smaller, the onions smaller, and then put in the herbs and spices and the jalapeno and the peppers and everything like that. Thrown our pork in, put some taco mix, some parsley, and some cilantro in there and just let it go. We really could have just done that. That would be fine. I'm sure that would be pretty tasty. It's an extra step. I always do it. I think it's worth it. But that's up to you. So Andrew came in to tell me how good the green chili pork smelled. And he took a look and he said, where's the carrots? Where's the potatoes? Oi. It's always something with him.
It's got to be a little bit more. It's all right. I've got one little Weasley potato. Look how small that is. It's kind of cute. And then a little bit of a decent potato. So I'm just going to give those. That one I just chopped into a quarter. This one I'm just going to chop into larger size chunks. Maybe not because it's pot pie. All right. Maybe not that large. So I don't know. I felt like that. I felt like that. I think that's fine. And then I still have these baby carrots. Those were my free item at Albertsons. And yesterday I ended up with two rewards and I had one reward pending at Albertsons. I'm just going to chop these baby carrots in half. And so I ended up at the end of the day having three rewards and I clipped a pound of bacon as my free item next time I go in. So I'm super excited about that because I am not paying $4.99 a pound for bacon. I love it, but I am just way too cheap for that. So this will just bulk it up and make it more stew-like, and that's fine. That will stretch it just a little bit further. And plus, we're going to cook this, make our pot pies today. Then we're going to freeze the rest of the green chili pork so that we have something in the freezer for a hard day when I don't feel like doing anything. And you know what? That's just enough. That's just enough. Okay, cover it back up. Don't worry about it. Put it back here so you're not tempted to open it up. Remember, if you're looking, you're not cooking. And you go ahead and wrap these back up for another day. So we add a little extra batch. The little extra batch never hurt anybody. Okay, several hours later, <laughs> and believe it or not, I had a little nap, and the wind has just been so terrible here today, I'm just all a wreck. So, in between going in and out and doing a bunch of other stuff, yada, 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 my crock pot did what it does best and just cooked the dinner for me, thank goodness. And so, I have just ladled up some of the green chili pork stew we're going to call it now since the addition of carrots and potatoes and it looks delicious and then i also just went ahead and whipped up a box of jiffy cornbread mix i followed the directions on the back of the box and i'm just going to go ahead and top these these are oven safe these were a gift from a friend a long, long time ago, bless her, and I'm still using them today. And that's got to be like maybe 26 years ago. So I like them. Andrew, Andrew loves anything that's individually portioned. He thinks that that's really special and really neat, and so... He loves anything that gets prepared in these. And he, like I said, he just loves things that are individually portioned. And I think that's hysterical. So I'm just going to give these a, a few dollops. And then I've got my oven preheating to 400 degrees. And getting that all heated up. And I'm making a mess. What I do best. Let's see what ends up on the floor today. It should be like a game we play. But you know, I've got lots of soap, so I'm not worried about it. And it's the end of the day, and I've gotten a lot accomplished today. I feel good about today. So this is kind of going to be the crust of my pot pie, so to speak. I think next time that I make this, I'm going to use the larger crusties cornbread mix or Marie Callender's or something like that or make my own. 
except I was feeling lazy. I also felt like I got plenty done with making my own salsa verde. So, you know, a little shortcut never hurt. Anyhow, it's not completely covering, but I'm going to see if that's going to do it. And now I have some on my hand. And drip some down the side of the bowl. I don't want that to bake on. I don't want to have to scrub really hard tonight. So I'm going to make sure I wipe that off with a paper towel. And I think I'm going to go grab a couple of green onions and just chop those up for a little bit of brightness on the top when this comes out. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven and get this baking for about 20 minutes. And I'm going to put it on a sheet pan because this one looks like it's going to overflow. And I don't want to clean the oven either. So I'm just lazy. I'm going to take a few extra steps. That's all right. Better to take an extra step now than have to spend an hour scrubbing it off at the bottom of the oven, right? So these right in and I'll show you what they look like when they come out and we have about half of our maybe a little bit more than half of our green chili pork stew in here now and I have turned the crock pot off I'm gonna let this cool on the counter I'm going to turn our overhead fan on to help this cool rapidly because I have about two hours to reduce it in temperature and then go ahead and get this into a freezer bag or a Tupperware and get this in the freezer. But there's a, there's a lot of meat. There's a lot of potato and all of the great salsa verde. And it actually turned out a pretty good color today. So I'm pretty happy with that. So we've got one meal coming out. It's going to be done any minute. Show you to that. Show you that when it's done, and then this will be our freezer freezer meal for later. Yay! Hooray! Okay, so this is how they look when they come out of the oven. I'm super glad that I put them on this baking tray because they are hotter than a popcorn fart, and I don't think I could have gotten them out of the oven without spilling them, making a mess, or burning myself. So definitely put them onto the baking sheet. Or if you're making it for the whole family, um, go ahead and put them, the baking, the baking dish, the casserole dish on uh, something else too. So there's, there's just no mess. No need to clean that up. And this feels really firm and nice. And you know, I kind of was disappointed that I didn't have enough to cover completely, but I kind of like the little peekaboo holes around. And you can see like a little pepper has come up in this one. I think that they look really tasty. I can't wait to dish in. And we've got 13 minutes until Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. Have a great day. Be good. Be careful. Look both ways. Think about liking and subscribing, please. And thank you. Till next time. Bye-bye.